I have been on a perpetual mission to find the answer to long-term sustainable weight loss, not to just lose the weight, but to be able to keep it off forever. And what I've uncovered is something that I am so grateful for. This knowledge has expanded my perception and view and also has helped me personally heal a lot of things within myself as far as my relationship with food and my body and just shifting gears in a different direction that I never saw coming. And so today's episode, we are going to uncover this secret and unlock how to access and to get off the roller coaster of yo-yo diets forever and transform our body with something called a reverse diet. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. My name is Ashley. I'm the host of the Unlocked podcast where we unlock different tips, strategies, and things to help us access our unlimited potential in life as far as anti-aging, age reversal, and upgrading our lifestyle. Today's episode is going to be a good one. I hope you get your notebooks ready. I hope you're prepared for a complete life change and to have something mind-blowing come your way. So I'm so excited to be able to bring this to you guys. I've spent the past month just diving into the research on this, to listening to different experts' perception, methods, strategies, and topics, and I have been implementing this in my own lifestyle, and it's a pretty big, massive shift and game changer, and I'm so excited to bring this to you guys today. So what we're talking about today is a reverse diet. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of a a background, right? I think most of us out there that are women, a lot of my viewers here and listeners are women, and a lot of us have been dieting our whole life or have been trying to lose body fat, been lose weight for as long as we can remember, our entire adult life, at least for me. I first started trying to lose weight when I was 13 years old. I went on a oatmeal diet where I ate one packet of oatmeal three times a day. It was a 100-calorie packet, and I worked out for about 1,000 calories a day. And that's what I thought would help me lose weight. Obviously, that is extremely unhealthy. That is not the good thing to do. I also found myself um, in a situation where I had tested and tried every single diet pill on the shelf at GNC. I had my wake-up moment when I was standing there in the pill aisle full of pills on the wall and I was looking at the pills like, hmm, what do I want to get next? And then I realized I had tried them all and that's when I recognized I had a problem. I ended up going to therapy. I ended up healing a lot of this stuff. I was really a very young girl and I shouldn't have been going through this stuff, but I was. And the sad thing is I really wasn't overweight. It was it was a problem, <laughs> okay? But that started my, uh, I guess, obsession with trying to lose weight. And I feel a lot of people can relate to wanting to achieve their ideal body composition, wanting to lose weight and wanting to keep that weight off. I've had three children in the process of this time. So my very first real effort to lose weight after that experience was to get ready for my wedding. That was the first time I actually tried like a low carb ketogenic diet that helped me drop the weight for my wedding about 25 pounds, which felt amazing. But guess what happened? I gained all that weight back. The moment the honeymoon started, the weight started piling back on. I was off the low carb diet and I was back to my normal routine. And then not only did I gain the weight back, but I gained an additional 20 pounds on top of that weight. And then I got pregnant. Okay. So I got pregnant with my first, I gained a ton of weight in that pregnancy. And then after he was born, I was like, I need to lose weight. So what did I do? I went back to a low carb diet, was working out like crazy. I lost 70 pounds, but then it started creeping back up again. I started gaining the weight back. Then I got pregnant again for my second. They were 16 months apart. Very close pregnancy there. 
and I gained even more weight. So I hadn't lost all the baby weight from the first, but then I gained the same amount of weight with the second. So I gained a ton of weight. And this was just the beginning of a constant yo-yo struggle with me, right? Because then I went back to what I thought I knew to lose weight. I thought I needed to be on a low carb diet to lose weight. I went back to low carb. And then I have cycled with low carb, a painful, torturous cycle for years. Um, It wasn't until recently that I unlocked a major unlock in my own journey, but this can be relatable to really anyone's um, experience with weight loss because what happens when you lose weight, we've been told forever, and this was the major thing that was that unlocked everything for me. We've been told the thing that you do to lose the weight is what you need to do to maintain that weight loss. The people who gain the weight back are the ones that fall off track on the thing that they do to lose the weight. So they're going to gain the weight back once they go back to their normal routines. While this is true, there is something missing from this entire formula. In order to lose weight, you need to be consuming less calories than your body is burning. We can be attracted to different diets that help us in that process. For me, going low carb helped me eat less because I was cutting out an entire macronutrient. I wasn't eating carbohydrates. So I was automatically eating less. But then I started gaining the weight back because um, eventually I started becoming hungrier and hungrier and hungrier over time. And with the low carb diet, as long as you're eating low carb, you can eat as much as you want. So this ended up putting me into a, a spiral there. But also I was damaging my microbiome. When you damage your microbiome, especially by removing something like carbohydrates, which a lot of healthy carbs are high in carbs, like vegetables that don't belong in a low carb diet, like typical ketogenic diet, because they would kick you out of ketosis if you go too high in your carbs, can cause problems because your microbiome actually is a master regular regulator of a lot of things in your system, including your metabolism. So... I decided to ditch fad diets and get away from the whole low carb fad diets and I decided to eat more balanced after having my microbiome tested. I got the results back from my microbiome. I was given a clear picture of what types of foods my body needed to heal and I started following those foods but I didn't want to be on any sort of restrictive diet, okay? So, Why am I telling you this story? Because I'm trying to set a foundation for you so you can understand how our body loses body fat and then gains it back. And in the process of going through all these different diets, when you lose weight, you are doing it in a way that your body has to um, tap into your stored body fat to utilize that stored fat as fuel. That's why we store it on our body. That's why it's there to begin with. And so by accessing the stored body fat, you're going to lose weight and we want to lose weight, right? But in the process of this, what happens is the lower your calories go, the lower your metabolic rate goes. Your metabolism will, will eventually come down because in a, a way for your body to survive and not die in a case of famine or starvation or like lack of food, your body has these programs that kick in and will help you so that you actually start using calories a little bit more um, more purposefully and it stops wasting calories. And so when you go into like a calorie restricted state, yes, you're going to lose body fat. But if there's no plan to turn this then to help boost and increase your metabolism, after you reach that fat loss stage, then what happens is if you stay too low too long, and this is what happened to me, because of the advice, what you do to lose the weight you need to keep doing to keep it off, I didn't think that I needed to then start reversing and repair my metabolism to then pull me out of the weight loss phase into a a phase where I can then maintain my loss, but in a way that is not setting me up to gain the weight back, okay? So for me, um, I recently lost 25 pounds within two and a half months of doing OMAD, which is one meal a day. And the reason I did OMAD is because it allowed me to get and access that calorie restricted state by eating balanced foods, all the macronutrients, but being mindful of eating the foods for my microbiome. And this kept me in a calorie restricted state. Now, here's where I made the mistake, okay? So 
the within the two and a half months that I lost that weight, that's when I should have started this next phase, which is the reverse diet. Most diets are going to fail you because they don't focus on what to do next after you reach the weight loss. They just assume just keep going and doing what you were doing. And that's where the mistake ends up. Okay. And I'm sorry if a previous video I gave that advice because that's all I knew. And that's what I've been told, just like you've probably been told. And it's set us up for a future um, scenario where we could find ourselves failing down the line. Okay. So I did nothing wrong with my fat loss phase. That worked out perfectly. I love OMAD for being able to give me that calorie restriction without feeling deprived because once you get into fasting like that, I was fasting 23 hours a day. I was eating all my food within a one hour eating window. And by doing that, I was not hungry during the other times of the day. I also was not doing any cardio. I was not doing, I was doing very little lifting weights, which was a mistake. I should have done more lifting weights at that time. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that here today as well. So, um, but, but I was smart enough to know I am focusing on one goal right now. I am focusing on the goal of weight loss. I'm not focusing on the goal of muscle gain and building and growth because these are two conflicting signals. If you're focused on loss and you're focused on growth at the same time, your body gets confused and then you end up spinning your wheels and not making any progress. That was part of the problem that I had with the keto diet because I was trying to um, focus on two goals at once. I was trying to lose weight plus build muscle and to build muscle, you need to be in a surplus. To lose weight, you need to be in a deficit. I think I was in a surplus and I was lifting weights and I think I was in a bulk for a very long time and that in that period of time when I was gaining weight, when I was trying to lose weight. <laughs> and so while metabolically that could have been setting me up for great success when I decided to go into the calorie mode of cutting the calories down, um, in my mind and for my mental health, I wanted to lose weight and couldn't figure out why I couldn't lose weight. So what I'm sharing with you guys today, you can pair this with any diet that you love. If you love keto, if you love low carb, if you love paleo, if you love Weight Watchers, if you love whatever <laughs> that you love to help you lose the weight, you can do that. The the This part of it is to help you build a sustainable lifestyle that will help you get off the yo-yo so you can maintain your results long term or have better success losing even more body fat, okay? So with a reverse diet, our main focus is healing our metabolic rate and our metabolism. Your metabolism is everything your body does to convert food into fuel. There's four different aspects of your metabolism. It also maintains your body temperature. You ever notice that you get really, really cold when you are either fasting for long periods or um, going into like a calorie restricted state or you're on a diet, you start getting cold? That's your metabolism lowering your body temperature to help conserve serve calories, okay? So what we want to do is rev up our metabolism so you start getting hotter, start feeling hotter, your body starts being more wasteful with calories and isn't so conserve, cons conservative with those calories so that you can build muscle because the more lean muscle mass you have on your body, the more calories your body is burning at resting without doing anything. I know this is stuff we've heard all along, but it's something we need to be mindful of because that foundation is what's going to set you up for the long-term success in being able to eat higher calories and maintaining your weight and boosting your metabolism, which is our goal. When you go into a calorie-restricted state, your metabolism changes. Over time, your body is going to start shutting down functions so that it can conserve these calories, conserve this energy. So eventually, the amount of food that it took you to lose the weight is now what you need to eat to maintain the weight. And now here's where the problem is. When you go on vacation or you have a scenario where you're eating higher calories, your body is going to put on the weight very quickly because you are maintaining at that weight, that, that calorie level that you initially lost the weight at. And this can happen very, very easily and it can come very, very quick. For me, I went to the Florida Keys for 10 days. And in this time, I was like, I'm not counting calories. I'm just going to drink whatever. I'm going to eat whatever. And I'll go back to OMAD and go back to it after that. Now, this was after me not only losing the weight after two and a half months, but then I stayed OMAD and I stayed in that low calorie level for about seven months, okay? 
that was my mistake. I should have done this reverse right after that two and a half months. I don't think you should stay in a calorie restricted state based on the research that I've been doing lately longer than 12 weeks. 12 weeks should be your your weight loss phase goal. Anything beyond that is when we start risking lowering our metabolic rate. So I stayed there way too long and that long period that I stayed there because for one, I was feeling so good because of my gut, okay? Because fasting for me helped heal my gut in a lot of ways and a lot of the issues that I was having with the bloating and swelling. So when I stopped eating multiple meals and gave my gut that long period of time without food, um, I was, I healed a lot within myself and I started feeling really, really good. And so I wanted to stay on that lifestyle long term. And I was, it was easy for me to stay around 1300 calories without feeling deprived because I had gotten into a rhythm and a routine with it. So that was fine. But the problem was the vacation. And if we are never going to have another vacation again, that's fine. But in reality, we go on vacation. I go on vacation and I don't want to be counting calories on vacation. I just don't. So that's where bringing in this next level of reverse diet in as strategy to help build a long-term success plan is extremely helpful, okay? So regardless of how you lost the weight, At the end of the day, it's because you had lower calories than what your body was burning because you then triggered the need for it to access that stored fat and use it to use it as fuel. So from that point forward, a reverse diet is a strategy to help you slowly increase your calories over time so that you then reverse adapt. So if we can adapt Um, to lower calories, your body can also adapt at higher calories and also maintain your weight, okay? So our goal here is to slowly over time increase our calories so slowly that your body doesn't have time to... um, It's like the, the calories that you're burning at resting slowly follow the increase in the calories. And so metabolically, your body's going to become more and more wasteful with calories because it wants to keep you the same weight. It doesn't want to gain a bunch of weight overnight, just like it doesn't want to lose a bunch of weight overnight. Your body wants to keep you the same weight. So strategically with a reverse diet, what we are doing is we're not focusing on loss. So I want you to abandon the thought process of weight loss for a period of time when your goal is to heal your metabolic rate. And I want you to focus on just maintaining your weight or seeing just a little um, bit of, of gain on the scale while you are putting in this work to improve and increase your metabolic rate so that you'll have more success later on in losing body fat and you will lose whatever you gain, but then you will also lose way more than that. That's the goal, okay? Because look at it from this perspective. If right now you are eating 13 to 1400 calories and you are maintaining your weight at that level, but you want to lose more weight beyond that, there's no more room for you to go. Yes, you could go down to 1200 calories. Yes, you could start working out more, but this is not a recipe for long-term success. Eventually, you're going to get your calories so low, it's going to impact your hormones. It's going to impact your sleep. It's going to impact your um, libido. It's going to impact all these other things that we don't want impacted, okay? We want to be able to set ourselves up so that we can eat a lot of calories and maintain our weight without putting weight on so that when we are in situations where it's a holiday, it's a vacation, you got people visiting and you're not tracking so closely, the the food you eat doesn't stick to you so quickly. It comes, it, it gets burned off, right? So regardless if you're comfortable eating 1300 calories right now, if you think about a long-term success of what your body needs, it needs to be able to have that ability to to burn more calories automatically versus manually, right? We want our body burning the calories without us having to go out and run a mile to burn the calories. What if your body could just burn those calories on its own? That's what the reverse diet does for you. Now, here's the thing. Some people start up a reverse diet at the beginning of their journey because they um, need to build the muscle first to be able to increase, to be able to have lots of room to be able to create that deficit, right? So like if you're someone who has been eating what you think is actually a low amount of food, like you you can't figure out, okay, I, I feel like I am 
unable to lose weight, but I don't eat that much, that is a sign of a slow metabolism. And you can increase your metabolism by simply implementing the reverse diet. So if you feel like you already don't eat very much and you are not able to lose weight no matter what diet you go on, this is the strategy for you to actually do the reverse diet portion first, get your metabolism up and running build up the muscle through strength training, which is not crazy. You don't have to join a gym. You don't have to do anything insane. You don't have to get a trainer. You don't have to go to these crazy uh, methods. But what you do need is a plan for strength training. Strength training is a big part of the reverse diet method, okay? Because strength and building up the muscle on your body is what's going to give that trigger for your body to to use these extra calories to build lean tissue and not body fat, okay? So we don't want to gain too much weight on the scale in this process. For women, about a half a pound a week is a good amount of gain that you might be gaining through this. Um, If you find yourself gaining more quickly than you would like, then you can just kind of scale back or stop where you are. I'm going to go into the exact strategy of how to do the reverse diet in this episode, and we're going to break it all down for you. But basically, we just need some things in place. Your mindset needs to shift away from constantly trying to lose loss all the time. weight loss, looking at the scale, and if the scale's not going down, you're not productive. We need to get out of that mindset for this little journey that we're about to embark on, okay? And if you're thinking about doing a reverse diet or if this sounds good to you and you feel like, okay, I think I need this, comment below and let me know because I would love to know who's thinking about doing this with me. I am right now four weeks into my own reverse diet, and I can tell you it took some adjustment at first, but then it became so freeing when I no longer started focusing on weight loss. I was just focusing on living wonderfully and being the, at the amazing point that I am in life right now and accepting my body for as it is, not trying to change it and lose weight. This is extremely freeing, but there are some mistakes that you can make with the reverse diet that could set you pretty far back. And the first mistake with that would be you just go off the rails and just start eating a ton of food because you're like, I'm trying to raise my metabolism. If you go and you eat way too much food all at once, you will gain weight very quickly and your metabolic rate will not catch up to that gain. Just like if you go on a diet and or a calorie restriction protocol and you lose weight very quickly, your metabolic rate is not going to drop dramatically to that lower rate very fast. It happens slowly over time the longer you stay in that deficit. So you might have been heard you don't want to lose weight too quickly. That's false because here's the thing with losing weight quickly. When you lose weight quickly, your your body doesn't have time to drop your metabolic rate. If you lose it very slowly, so let's use the example of just um, slowly reducing your calories over time, Just like a reverse diet, how you can increase your calories slowly over time and not gain weight and have your metabolic rate follow you, your metabolic rate can also follow the loss if you go too slowly. So that's why it's beneficial for you to do cycles of long reverse diets where you're slowly increasing it over time and then um, quick 12-week cutting phases fat loss phases. I'm going to drop it and then I'm going to go reverse it. And you might have to go through multiples of these cycles if you've got a lot of weight that you were trying to lose. Okay. Um, But this is a strategy that never gives you a point where you feel like I can't lose weight anymore. Because if you ever feel like you can't lose weight anymore, that's when you start the reverse cycle. And then you go back. Once you get that metabolic rate up, you can then drop it down again. Okay. Um, so we don't want to just go start binge eating like crazy, eating a ton of food because you're going to set yourself up then for failure. You will not, um, you will gain a lot of weight and then it could be a possibility that your metabolic rate, your total daily energy expenditure, um, which is the total amount of calories burned each day, um, from all the different processes, the thermogenic effect of food, there's the non-exercise 
uh, adaptive ther- thermogenesis, non-exercise adapted th- adaptive th- thermogenesis, which is NEAT, right? NEAT, if you've ever heard that term, it's been thrown around like crazy lately. NEAT is all of the little movements you do throughout the day, like fidgeting or unconscious movements, you know, like just moving like slightly, like me just moving my hands without thinking about it is Neat and neat actually contributes to a very large amount of the total daily energy expenditure we put out. The total daily amount of calories our body is burning throughout the day, and we don't even realize we're doing it. But when you go into a calorie restricted state, your body automatically pulls down on the neat. You're going to be fidgeting a lot less, you're going to be moving a lot less without even thinking about it. And you don't realize this is your body's way of dropping your energy expenditure down so you're burning less calories during the day, so you're eating less. But but then you're burning less and then it ends up matching. And then the, the exercise activity also does this as well. So another big mistake people make, and especially now, right now with the reverse diet, I'm not doing any cardio and I don't recommend that you do either based on the strategies I've heard from the different experts that I have, I have followed. And what I've learned on this topic, cardio is the reason cardio is a problem when you're focusing on reverse dieting and also when you're focusing on losing the body fat is that your body adapts very quickly to the energy output that you put out. So have you ever seen some people who are like running all the time, but like they are, their body stays the same? Like how do you run three miles a day, but like you look exactly the same. You haven't lost any weight. Your body composition stays the same. Why? Why? Wouldn't you be in like the best shape of anybody you know because you're running all the time? (laughs) The reason for this is because your body actually adapts in the calories out to match the extra energy that you're expending through these cardiovascular activities. So while it's great to do um, different sports and stuff, and if you love an activity that involves cardio and you do it for other reasons other than weight loss, then and it's something you're going to do all the time regardless, then that's fine. But the problem is when you start adding in like a cardio routine where you're burning 500 calories in order to burn more calories during your day, and um, through doing this through endurance, what it's telling your body is it's giving the conflicting signals where your body wants to build muscle, but because you're doing these endurance workouts, it's saying we don't we actually want to pare muscle down for this endurance because you don't need a lot of muscle for endurance. It's actually a different signal. And so if you're doing like 500 extra calories of cardio a day, eventually your body is going to turn down the other systems like the NEAT and other things to adapt to that extra energy output load that you're doing. And especially if you're doing it consistently over and over and over and over and over again, then your body gets the signal very quickly that you need to create that homeostasis. And so then when you stop that exercise, guess what? Just like the scenario with eating less calories, then eventually your body adapts to that when you stop burning those extra 500 calories, even if your body adapted to that, now all of a sudden you're going to start gaining weight because um, you need that exercise just to maintain the small amount of calories that you are consuming and you're burning, okay? So cardio is not a very smart strategy for fat loss, even though it does have some health benefits. So I'm not saying cardio is bad in general. I'm just saying if your goal is fat loss or your goal is to increase your metabolism, cardio doesn't have a place in this scenario. So it's not something to apply for strategy. However, moving more is good. Walking is extremely helpful. I actually put back on my Um, Fitbit so that I could track my steps so I could be mindful of the amount of activity I'm doing in my day. Now, when I was in my fat loss zone and I was burning body, a lot of body fat, my systems basically shut down as far as energy goes. I was very I lethargic. I was not moving around much. I was extremely lazy. I was just like, I'd put a pile of laundry in one spot and I would let it pile up before I would actually go to move it. Um, but then with the reverse diet and I'm getting these more calories, I'm able to do a lot more activity because I'm moving around a lot more because I've got a lot more extra calories available for me to do these other activities in my day. And this is another reason why the fat loss phase should be short. 
and not be just like a long drawn out years and years and years and years of you trying to lose weight, pushing the exact same weight around up and down five, 10 pounds over and over and over again. We should be doing short durations of weight loss and long durations of metabolism building and then keep on cycling those things out. Those are the main mistakes that people make. So if you're getting into this reverse diet, um, here's your strategy. Your strategy, first of all, if you do not know how many calories your body burns on to maintain your weight at this exact moment, then you probably need to track for about a week just eating normally as you have been um, to maintain your weight. So once you get that down and so like track every little thing, every little bite, every little cookie, every little everything that you eat, track it in an app. There's a bunch of free apps like my fitness pal is one. You can use one like the one I use. I use Carbon Diet Coach. That's a really good one. Um, but it, it's not cheap. It costs money. I'm not affiliated with them. Um, but I use that app and it also will help you with a reverse diet as well. There's a, a um, setting on there. So as you track your food, if you can say your goal is to reverse diet, it will give you a target of what to eat um, and how much to eat. Now, when you know how many calories your body burns. Now for me, I know because I was eating 1300, around 1350 calories a day, every day of OMAD for like seven months, I know that's my calories that my body right now is my is burning at um it came down to that. So so I knew I need to slowly reverse back up from that level. So my first goal was just to increase by 100 calories. So to go from 1350 to 1450 and to stay there for a couple of weeks. So you can do one week, you can do two weeks, however it feels comfortable for you. Um, some people like to just bump it by 50 calories. Maybe 100 calories might be too much for you. It all depends on the person and your own comfort level and and how much food you know that you typically eat. Now, the funny thing is I was tracking more in-depthly with the reverse diet than I was um, in my weight loss phase because with OMAD, I pretty much knew it was very hard for me to overeat on OMAD. Um, but with a reverse diet, I realize it's very easy to overeat <laughs> if I'm not paying attention. And I just don't want to end up in a scenario where I not only gain the weight back that I lost, the 24 pounds, but even gain even more than that. That's not what I want. That's it's The, the goal here is to get out of the yo-yo diet, to build a healthy body that is strong, that is ready to live through the rest of my life and set me up for long-term health, longevity, and success. So um, so we're going to go up. We're going to bump our calories up about 100 calories, and we're going to stay there for, you can stay there one week, two weeks, or three weeks before you bump it up another 100 calories. Now, how long do you need to be in this reverse diet? You will know when it's the timing is right for you to then shift back down into a weight loss phase. But typically, the amount of time that you were dieting for is the amount of time you want to be in a reverse diet at a minimum um, or when your calories that you are consuming reach a level where it feels like a lot of food for you and you feel like you have a lot of room to be able to create a deficit and to have space there. So as example, for someone like me coming from 1350 calories, my goal is to get up over 2000 calories a day and to be maintaining my weight at that level. I don't want to gain any more than I would say five to 10 pounds in this process, depending on how long it takes for me to get there, right? So I'm only on month one and my, I'm realistically, I can, I recognize this reverse could last me. It's going to last me at least um, three months, but it could last me longer than that. It just depends. I want to be able to get my calories up over 2000. So, you know, that could take six months. I don't know, but we're just going to go very slowly with this and, if weight starts coming on too quickly, like I said, I will either then just stop there and stay at that calorie level for a little while, or I will bring it down a little bit and just stay there just a little bit longer before I bring it up again slowly. The key here is to go slowly. So after four weeks of tracking this for myself, doing um, resistance training, 30 to 40 minutes a day, four days a week, um, following a program. Now, the program that I'm following is called the MAPS Starter Program. Again, not affiliated with them, but I really love these guys, these um, Mind Pump guys. I've listened to every single one of their podcast episodes, and um, I love their workout program. 
Um, it's uh, very affordable. <laughs> it's literally a course. You do it at home. You just need some weights. And so that's the the method that I chose. Now, you can also search on YouTube for some weightlifting programs, but I think having a strategic plan and program in place that takes you through a process of of constantly increasing your strength because while we're not focused on weight loss right now, we're not worried about the scale going down. We're more so focused on strength. If you can be week over week over week, be increasing the amount of weight that you are lifting in your moves, you are increasing strength and do it in a way that is comfortable, not forced. You are increasing strength. And that is our goal. Now, to increase muscle mass, you need a calorie surplus. So pairing this with your reverse diet is perfect timing. Now, you're also going to heal your hormones. You're going to heal a lot of things within yourself if you've been in a calorie-restricted state for a very long period. I've noticed for myself, besides no longer being cold, I feel so great. I actually have so much energy to do a ton of things. And this is why I think short durations of different strategies are very, very successful versus doing the same thing for too long. Because when I first started OMAD, I also felt great. I also felt amazing. I also felt incredible. And the next time I do it, I will also feel incredible and amazing because it's a shift and it's a change. The problem is when we do one thing for too long and allow our body to adapt to that. It it doesn't produce the same results and it doesn't become successful for us. Now, I have a couple different strategies within my toolkit um, to help me enhance my results with this entire process. Now, the whole time, the whole seven months that I was eating 1,300 calories, a low calorie restriction state, and I was doing OMAD, this entire time, I was using a product um, called Keto Nat, Keto OS Nat, and this is these are ketones. These are naturally uh, bioidentical ketones to the ketones your body makes naturally. Now, I was not eating the ketogenic diet. I was eating lots of carbs during this time. I was doing a lot of food flexibility. Um, I was eating very mindfully for my microbiome. But this is the magic that the ketones had on me in that stage. Typically, when you reduce your calories and your body starts pulling your metabolism down to help you in that state, get to that state where you are, okay, if you're eating 1,300 calories a day, we need to figure out how to get your body to maintain um, and survive on 1,300 calories a day. Typically, you will pare down muscle and you will lose muscle mass in this process and you'll lose a lot of muscle mass. Now, here's the interesting thing. Ketones are muscle um, protective. So when you consume ketones, in addition to a calorie restricted state, your body, you're sending signals to your body to maintain the muscle mass you have. Um, And so when I came to this reverse diet scenario and I had all the scans done and everything and I started lifting weights again because previous to this, I was lifting weights a lot and my weights, my strength level matched the same as it was before I started the long fast and before I started the calorie restriction. I did not lose muscle mass in this entire process that I lost the body fat. So um, I had the the muscle mass there and I also had the muscle memory there from when I was previously um, working out. And so what's happening here is I, I used the ketones to maintain my muscle mass while I was burning body fat. It also helped with like appetite control and that sort of thing while I was in that stage of burning the body fat. And then now going into this next phase of um, building my me- metabolism, the ketones help you not only maintain muscle, but build muscle and also helps you um, not gain body fat or to uh, lose body fat in that process. So drinking the ketones every day in both cycles have massive benefits. And so I've been drinking that every single day. I do have samples. If you want to try a sample of that, they taste amazing. There's all different kinds of flavors. I'm a promoter of this just to have full transparency. Okay. So when I found this product, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the science. I fell in love with the technology. I initially found it when I was doing the ketogenic lifestyle and I continue to use it to this day because you don't have to do keto. It's just, I don't know why ketones get the the wrap of the keto diet, but it has actually even better benefits for people who aren't doing keto. So So I do have samples for you below. I ship those out of my house. You'll get a special package from me 
with all the information you need if it's something you want to try out. But that's optional. This is a supplement to help you. The goal here is to maintain our muscle and to lose body fat, okay? So within both of these cycles, that tool helps, okay? And you can drink one a day or you can drink two a day. If you're in a weight loss phase, you can use it in the morning, you can use it in the afternoon. Right now with my reverse diet, I'm drinking it first thing in the morning, when I wake up, I'm having my nat ketone um, and then I'm having a couple meals a day. So coming off of OMAD, I was coming out of a one meal a day lifestyle, simply adding or splitting into two meals. Now is that's a very easy way to slowly bump my calories up to then split into three meals. So I was tracking all of this in an app, but recently, because after a month of this, a month of tracking the slow increase and getting a hang of, okay, how much do I need to eat so I don't gain weight too quickly, but I am providing my body with a surplus so that I'm able to build this muscle. Um... I've now decided to move it into more of an intuitive eating scenario where I know I'm eating more and some days I eat higher and some days I eat a little bit less, but it all ends up averaging out in the end. So I'm kind of testing this out for myself. My first meal of the day is typically made for my microbiome. It's to feed my gut bugs. It's following the... um, the foods that I was recommended to eat from the testing that I took with my microbiome test. Now, I think everybody should take this test. I think it's a very valuable to have personalized information and a food like strategy for yourself to optimize your health. That's what I personally think because after I took it for myself, it just opened up this huge possibility for me and got me out of the cycle of constantly thinking about diets. I was more so just eating the right foods that I should be eating for my body and finding a way to do it in a way that's balanced for me. And yes, it has a ton of flexibility. Sometimes I will eat you know, different things that you would not think are technically healthy, but because I eat a lot of healthy food, in addition to that, that creates that balance for me. Um, Another thing that I started doing that's been helping me is I, for one, I cut out the alcohol. So I did that um, two months ago and that's great. So I'm continuing on with that. Alcohol throws a major wrench because you could be consuming a ton of calories with alcohol that's not giving your body back any nutrients. So as we're trying to heal our metabolism, we not only don't want to gain weight, we want to make sure we are um, replenishing our body with any nutrients that maybe have been lacking from this period of restriction that we were on. Um, and so alcohol could be a struggle with that, but it's a personal choice there. Um, the other thing I decided to do was I decided to put myself on like a one month challenge to cut out fried foods. I didn't realize how much fried food I was actually eating (laughs) until I mindfully decided to cut it out because fried food contains a lot of extra calories for not a lot of extra nutrition, just like the alcohol does. And I found myself, you know, I would, you know, maybe grab some potato chips or something. That was something interesting for me because I was like, wow, potato chips are fried, tortilla chips are fried, you know, You get like obviously French fries, which are one of my favorite things fried, but I want to live a healthy lifestyle and I want to do this in a way where I'm not packing on a ton of weight all at once. And the easiest way to do that for me is just to say, you know, I can go 30 days without fried food, see where it takes me after that point. And so I am one week into that goal and it's been great. It was a first of a little bit of an adjustment, but now it's wonderful. So That's just a side, just to kind of help you in this process. If you're like, okay, what do I eat (laughs) with this? That would be it, right? So we want to make sure we are focused on our microbiome, giving your body the food that it needs as far as fiber is concerned. And then, um, and you can do this in many different ways. And if you follow me over on Instagram and you watch my stories, I post the types of foods that I'm eating. But we also want to be very mindful to have some food freedom, some food flexibility. We want to get out of the diet mindset. We don't want to food to control our life. And we don't want to have any unhealthy behaviors around food. We want to build and create a healthy relationship with food. And that involves variety. And that involves freedom. And that involves giving yourself a break when you have foods that you think are typically not good foods, well, maybe they're not good if you eat them every day, but the dose makes the poison, right? You can eat something that is unhealthy every once in a while or unhealthy in your mind or what you've labeled it 
and you will be fine, okay? The problem is when we start doing it every day. But then now, as you're setting up your lifestyle, think of it like this, okay? When I do go back into a period of dropping and cutting this weight, um, will it be easy for me to cut specific things out to then make it a very easy deficit for me? And so as you are eating different meals and different foods, be mindful of what will what meal, what food here will I be dropping out to access that deficit? So lately for me, I've actually started one thing that I've added in with this surplus is I started having like um, frozen yogurt at night before bed, which ends up being about 150 to 200 calories within there. Um, and that to me is something that is extra that will be easy for me to remove when I decide to go on my deficit, right? Because depending on if I'm eating three meals a day, by the time I get to the end of this reverse diet, and then that would be considered like a dessert or whatever, which I would consider it a part of like the third meal, um, it would be easy for me to take that out maybe drop it down to two meals instead of three meals, and then I can stay on that for a while. What I don't want to do is I don't want to put myself into a position where I go so low in calories with my next deficit that um, then I go on vacation and then just spike it and drive it up the like crazy overnight. We don't want to do that. So I need to actually strategically plan my next cutting session so that I'm pretty far away from any vacation I'm going to take or any situation where I might be set up in a place where I might be eating a lot more than usual. And then I will prepare myself to then be able to go into a reverse to bring myself back out of that in a slowly slow way so that I can get to a point where I can then have be eating higher calories, be eating more frequently during the day and to not put the weight back on. But then when I go on vacation, this is way more sustainable on vacation, right? So that's long term. That's what you can do for maintaining your weight uh, forever beyond the weight loss. Okay, so you might be coming to the end of your weight loss journey and just be like, listen, I just want to lose 20 pounds and be done with it and never gain that weight or ever have to think about it again. And then in that scenario, you might just have one cycle of these you know, cutting and then reversing and then maybe just doing it as maintenance if you just feel like, okay, maybe I got like five pounds, let's do a little cut and do a little reverse and just do it like that. You know, it doesn't, the the goal for the long-term success of this is to continue on lifting weights and building that muscle and having these healthy habits built up where you can eat more and maintain your weight and not be set up to gain the weight back. And that would be good. Um, for fasting, the reason I stopped OMAD when I'm focusing on the reverse diet is because I don't want to send that trigger for loss to my body. I want it to be focusing on building. I want it to be using the tools that it has, having the excess of calories to be able to put it into building that lean muscle mass. And I, so I don't want to trigger that. And OMAD is a very strong trigger for your body to to um, lose weight. So Um, that's why I'm doing right now. I'm focused on 16 hour fasting. So because I've been fasting for a while, a 16 hour fast is, you know, a smaller fasted window, um, and an eight hour eating window that works well for me. Now, if you never fasted ever, you don't necessarily need to get into fasting right now. (laughs) Use that as a tool within your fat loss phase when, when you're working on that as a goal. Okay. So if you have been fasting to lose weight, you just want to pair that back a little bit to then bring it back. Um, or get into a a kind of a routine with it that feels comfortable and good to you. You can obviously, you know, do fasting as long as the calories are the same, it's not going to matter either way. So like if you are doing OMAD and you are now saying, okay, well, I'm going to bump up my calories that way, but I want to keep OMAD in place. You can absolutely do that. It's a personal choice, right? It is. So um, for me, because at the same time, I am pairing a microbiome healing scenario for myself. Um, I got retested for the microbiome, right? So I retested my microbiome, got a new list of food because this changes over time, especially as you make different changes, this is going to change. And I will test again um, probably at the end of this reverse diet and then use that information to then go into my next fat loss phase. But because I am working on getting my microbiome to the level where I feel like my microbiome's potential is, right? My full potential of my microbiome to help me with all the different aspects of life, um, and especially my metabolism, my metabolic rate, 
healing my microbiome involves eating a little bit more food. And so it's perfect timing, perfect strategy to do that because now I can have oatmeal without being like, well, I only have this many calories left over. Um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm eating very good quality, healthy food. And that's the other thing. If you don't want to track what you're eating and how much food you're consuming, if you're eating high quality food, there's less of a need to have to track that food. And so when I decided to cut out the fried food, now all of a sudden the quality of my food increased dramatically. So that's when I was like, you know, I don't think I need to track my calories anymore right now, unless I see a massive jump on the scale and then I'll start tracking. Um, but if you want to eat more balanced and you do want to eat fried food or whatever, then the need to track is much more important because it is very easy, very easy to overeat on like fried foods and foods that are basically engineered to make you crave it and make you want to eat more, right? They have experts that all they do all day long is try to make food more addicting. And so fried food is the primary target of that. It's hyper palatable foods. So when you eliminate fried food, you actually make a major step forward, even if you're consuming sugar still, right? Your sugar cravings end up going down. My, the only sugar I really have in my day is that... Um, that frozen yogurt at the end of the day. And I do yogurt specifically. I use frozen yogurt because of the health benefits of yogurt. So instead of choosing just like a high fat um, ice cream, going frozen yogurt is just like the better option. And so that's what I've been doing. Um, hopefully this helps you and has helped uncover some major um, stumbling blocks that you might have been experiencing with your own journey and confusion that you might have been experiencing or can take you out of a scenario where you feel like, okay, wait, I don't know what I need to do to lose weight anymore. I can't lose any more weight and I'm stalled out and I'm stuck. This is your answer, guys. This is your answer. We're going to reverse you out. We're looking at the long-term game here. Don't focus so much on the quick fix. Focus on where you are, what you are building and what you are creating. Your body's going to be with you the rest of your life. There's no rush. I know we want to rush to a goal, but if you can strategically build up a very strong metabolism, get your metabolic rate up to a level where you're eating like over 2,000 calories a day and maintaining where you are now, um, then pulling it down from 2,000 to um, like 1,500, a 500 calorie deficit through food, not through exercise, keep maintaining that extra movement that you're doing, be mindful of it, keep track of it, um, your steps, but you will be more successful at losing more weight with this strategy than you would if you just constantly reduce your calories and stay at a low calorie place. Now, another thing you can do is called alternate uh, reverse dieting. And what that is, is you have a day where your calories are high, but then your calories are lower. But at the end of the week, they all average out to the same surplus that you're looking for. So if your goal is to have your 100 calorie surplus, by the end of the week, um, you're going to add up all your calories by seven days, and then that's going to give you your total amount of calories, and then you're going to divide that up, and you can actually do it so, and this is this follows the natural pattern of the way we typically eat normally, right? We don't typically eat the exact same amount of food every single day. So if you consume, let's say, 1,300 calories one day and 2,000 calories the next day, it all is going to average out at the end of the week, right? So that's just kind of how you can do that. You can do, you can, you can like lay it out so you're planning it or you can do alternate day, whereas like a lower calorie day, which might be like, let's say you were eating 1300 calories. Maybe you do a 1300 calorie day and then you do like a, a 1600 calorie day and then a 1300 calorie day and a 1600 calorie day, slowly bringing that calorie level up. That's another thing that you can do, right? You can combine, if you were doing fasting, you can do your higher fasted days with um, a less long fast day. So these are all ways that you can slowly add in the amount of food that you're eating slowly over time. So your body slowly adapts over time. Now, also when you go into like a weight loss phase, you can do this. Um, and, and this, how this works as well, because we want to, we, we do, we don't want to take our time with the weight loss phase. We want to drop the weight quickly because we do want to do it before our body has a chance to catch up. We want to do it before your body starts finding that balance, right? We want to kind of shock our body. Just like, let's imagine going on vacation and just eating a ton of calories and gaining a ton of weight. We want to do that, but in reverse. And we want to go and we want to reduce our calories, make sure we're maintaining nutrition. We don't want to find ourselves in like a, a new uh, nutrient 
de- depleted state. We want to maintain the nutrition. The other really important side of this is protein. Okay. So while I'm not counting calories right now and I'm just being mindful, I'm extremely mindful of the protein because your body needs protein to build the muscle. Okay. So the one thing that is very important is one, the calories, increasing it slowly, not increasing it too fast, but also eating enough protein so that you have the building blocks to actually build the muscle you need. So I've been focusing on 100 to 130 grams of protein a day. Um, There's like a one-to-one ratio. There's all these different apps you can look at to figure this out. But if you're doing one of these calorie counting apps to kind of get your handle on how many calories you should be eating, it should be easy for you to figure out how many cal- uh, how much protein you want to be consuming. You don't want to be under eating protein in this phase. You want to be eating enough or even a little bit more. That's fine. Um, and that's the main thing. I don't pay attention to the other two macros really. I don't really care if I'm eating too much as long as I'm eating the protein I need typically. And I usually in my first meal, sometimes I'll have oatmeal for my first meal, but a lot of times lately I've been having a very high protein meal for my first meal. And that actually makes me a lot less hungry later in the day. So we all have to feel our body out and see how we feel for ourselves. We don't want to go in a major binge here. We don't want to eat trash for this time. We do, we want to set up and build a strong metabolism. The metabolism is the goal. And so eating nutrient dense foods is going to get you there. Eating fiber rich foods is going to get you there. Um, being mindful and tracking if you're not sure is going to get you there. Um, but if you find yourself overeating and eating a lot and then realizing, okay, I think I'm going too quickly on this. It's okay. Just pull back a little bit, keep, start tracking again. Maybe if you stop tracking or if you haven't tracked and then just take it slowly, right? Again, for women, half a pound, um, gain per week is to be expected. Um, if you're gaining more than that, it could be, you know, that time of the month, it could be water weight. Doesn't necessarily need to be something to freak out about. What you want to do is get your body to a place where you, you can tell, okay, I can tell I'm eating more now and my body weight is staying stable. And then you, you get to that point and we know it as women, we know it. Once you get to that point, then you just bump it just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> And then, and then when you, you feel yourself out, okay, I'm staying stable, you bump it just a little bit. And remember, this could take one month, this could take three months, this could take seven months, right? It could take as long as it needs to take. Give your body time to build, to, to focus on the health, become healthy, be, be healthy. Like I need to build a healthy body right now. And then if you have that extra weight that you want to lose, go into that deficit cycle, all right? So hopefully this video helped you. Let me know below in comments if you enjoyed this one. I enjoyed recording this for you because I've put a lot, a lot, a lot of time, energy, and effort into learning this for myself because I want to get this right for myself because I want to keep uh, my results forever and I want to do it in a way that doesn't feel like torture. (laughs) I want to just live a happy, healthy life. And that's the whole point of this. So hopefully this information helps you as much as it has been helping me. And I will see you guys in the next one.